Hey, I'm Femi, and this is my project on understanding transformer representations on graph problems. So why does this matter? The transformer was introduced in 2017 as a new language model for translation tasks. But in the span of six short years, language models based on transformers can do proof-based math, pass the bar exam, and do better than 90% of students on the SAT. GPT-4 is capable of easily passing most captures. All these new capabilities in just six years. So research is moving super fast and our best safety algorithms are already failing. So reinforcement learning from human feedback as our primary safety algorithm for um, protecting these um, large language models. But it's shown to be weak. We have um, a glut of papers that just show how um, RLHF can easily be bypassed and jailbreaks come out almost every month. To make matters worse, Mistral open sources their models. So we have this huge, powerful LLM, which is super easy to jailbreak, and people do it all of the time. Okay, so we know AI models are developing faster than we can control them. So what are we going to do about it? Mechanistic interpretability is this promising field of ML that um, is learning to build a rigorous understanding of why these models do what they do. And it's what I spent my time in the fellowship diving into and learning. So for example, a problem that we might apply um, mechanistic observability to is this um, reinforcement learning problem. So the model is trying to learn to visit all these balls in order. And we see here that the blue uh, ball is our model and the red ball is some agent that's following, that's going to all of these spheres in order, right? So we eventually see that our model gets high accuracy and learns to visit all of the spheres in order. But when we move to our test data set where the um, red ball is actually adversarial and goes to the um, balls in the wrong order, we see that um, our, the performance of our model has drastically diminished. And this is because our model didn't really learn to model um, the underlying distribution, it just learned a useful heuristic, which was following the red ball. Now, this might be obvious to us, but many problems are higher dimensional, and we might not be able to see the heuristics that the model is learning in our training data set. All we can see is that it achieves high accuracy, right? So mechanistic interpretability allows us to break open these models. I kind of see like, okay, what are you doing? How are you doing it? Is Are you just learning heuristics or are you learning some underlying algorithm? Okay, but why graphs? Graphs are literally everywhere, and I mean everywhere. Everything from Google Maps to Google Search to the internet can be represented as a graph. Transformers are already being rolled out to these graph problems, and as we've seen before, research moves fast. And understanding how transformers represent graphs, which are easily representable by human minds, can improve our uh, research on understanding of or transformer under representations elsewhere. Okay, but what even is a graph? Graphs model connections. Anything that has connections can be modeled as a graph, including neural networks. So the types of graphs we have here are directed graphs, in which um, connections flow one way, like I can go here, but I can't go here. And we have undirected graphs, where connections go both ways. I can go here and here and here and here and here and so on and so forth. So here's our research methodology. I'm going to pick a simple problem based on graphs, train the transformer to solve it, and start breaking down and trying to understand why the transformer does what it does. Then I'm going to try and casually intervene on what I think the representations are to verify them. Okay, so here's some useful jargon. So below, you see Andrew Koparthi holding the graphical representation of a transformer. And so what you have here is actually the um, encoder and decoder of a transformer. But we usually only focus on the decoder because that's what ChatGPT uses. So the layer is the smallest unit of a transformer that you're really going to need to understand here. And the residual stream connects previous activations to new ones. So what I mean by activation is you see these little sublayers, they actually um, produce little computations, right, that help the transformer uh, do whatever task it needs to get done, right? And so the residual stream is where these things write to. And the residual stream is, you can think of it as just a sum of all the activations before it. So the residual stream here is the sum of the activation here, then here, then here, then here, so, so on and so forth, right? And we can have a bunch of these layers. Um, the model I use has 24 layers. So onto the linear representation hypothesis. This is that models represent ideas as 
directions in some high dimensional space, right? So I can say a king is somewhere between um, on like some axis of powerful, it's probably high and powerful, and some axis of male, it's probably male to female, it's probably high male. So it'd be in this direction, while a queen might be in this direction. So that's the linear representation hypothesis. And a probe is a little deep learning model trained to take in raw inputs of layers and extract info from them. Like, um, not info that we're training on, just info that we think the layer of the, or the model might be able to understand. So, Othello GPT is an interesting case study when we, we were actually able to find a linear representation of the board game Othello in a model trained to predict the next move. And it was a major inspiration for this project. So, here are some details. You can check these out in my document or view more details in my collab. More details. And this is the specific problem that I trained on. Now, the, the thing that I was optimizing for was simplicity, while still being a graph problem. And so um, it was really easy. Given some uh, graph, does there exist a cycle of length three in the graph? So a cycle is just some loop of uh, nodes, right? So this would be a cycle of length four, this would be a cycle of length three. They are, the answer to this question on this graph would be no, the answer here would be yes. So we find that the model does learn how to solve the problem well. It has used 93% accuracy on the test set, and linear probes are actually good at extracting info about our original graph. So there's a lot more to do. Thank you for listening.